Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HA Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter. I'm joined here on the couch as always with Sally Sanders and today we've got Director of Development of the Prospect Theater Mike Santini, a former classmate of mine at Richfield High School. Woo, go Tigers! Mike, welcome to the couch. We're going to talk all Very things excited. Prospect or Theater today Love as well as The Girl on the Train which is coming out Thursday night. Yep. See you at the Prospector, yep. 7 Thursday or 7.30? 7. All right, we'll talk about that in our second segment. We'll, st we'll start talking about the things that the Prospector has going on this fall. I believe you have a chili cook-off? Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. We got a chili cook-off. We got a, a, a sparkle showcase. We've got all of the fall and, and December movies coming out, holiday season. It's going to be a busy time at Let's Prospector. start with just a little bit about what the Prospector oh, is. Oh, yes. Because we have a lot of people watching People that don't the know what the Prospector might be. Who aren't familiar with your concept. Without a doubt. So uh, the Prospector Theater is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to providing meaningful employment for adults with disabilities. We do so through the operation of a premium first-run movie theater located right in the heart of uh, Ridgefield, Connecticut. So On the site of... A former movie theater. On the side of the former Ridgefield Playhouse in, in, in Ridgefield, exactly. And uh, the Prospector Theater is committed to changing the employment outcomes for adults with disabilities in this country. Currently, there are 57 million Americans with disabilities, and 47 million are unemployed. Uh, disability is the largest minority group in the country and the only one you can enter at any point in your life. So, this is not only an important issue to Ridgefield and Fairfield County, the but whole country. The whole country, and to that matter, the whole world. So, uh, we have 100 and five prospects, the name of all paid employees at the theater, and 70% identify with the disability. So our competitive and integrated workforce is changing the employment outcomes for adults with disabilities across the world. And what are some of the jobs that the prospects do there at the theater? So we as prospects, we, I mean, we do everything, and that's one of the reasons why we chose a movie theater is because it allowed us to create so many jobs, and jobs which are in very high demand, um, specifically when you think about audiovisual uh, technology, things like that. Um, so we have like our, our box office staff, uh, our ushers, our concessionists, you know, our ushers go in and greet every audience. We revitalize that old timey, you know, romantic tradition of going to the movie theaters and having it. Have someone engaged. introduce the film yeah. to you. I so love that our part ushers about it. introduce, um, you know, we have projectionists, we have a production team that creates all the videos that you see before each and every screening. They create promotional videos. Um, they create sponsorship videos, PSAs, mission related videos. They do all the graphic design for our digital signage and our posters. We have a gourmet popcorn team. Uh, we have an outdoor landscape. That gourmet popcorn team. is good. Yes, that yes. is really good. That is like like you try it once in your home. I'd it's, highly it's recommend that amazing. to people that have not been to the Prospect. Yet. Yes, without a doubt, our uh, Belgian chocolate toffee. I saw <laughs> that. Yeah, I, was yeah. there, I saw the <laughs> Magnificent Seven there last week, and I saw it. and was like, I have to get it. Yeah, and then you can go into the cafe, and we have our baristas and bartenders there, and you can get a beer. A, yeah, you can get. <laughs> I was about to say you can get coffee, but if you know you yeah. want to go to the movie, grab a beer, grab right. some wine. We have that Chill as well. Out with that. Yeah. But the goal of of, of the theater is to to move these prospects along. So it's really a skills development program yeah. to that end. And everybody walks in and they see, you know, if you haven't been in the Prospector, you have to come. It's, it's one a of those, beautiful space. It's one of those spaces where you walk in and you, 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 you know, it's infinitely different than any other movie theater you've ever been to. Um, uh, a beautiful mission related artwork and the theaters are absolutely gorgeous and, you know, the leather loungers that you can sit in in Theater 3 or the bean bags and just what a premium experience it is for everybody. Um, but then, you know, the, the ultimate guys that everybody walks in and thinks, hey, this is a movie theater. It's a movie theater. They show movies. They got a concession stand. But really, job training program, skills training program. We often talk about uh, the old adage that if you uh, give a man a fish, he feeds himself for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he can feed himself for a lifetime. So we are equipping our prospects with the skills they need to pursue a meaningful life through meaningful work and to have that sense of uh, independence and you know economically being able to buy your own place, your gr own groceries, things of that nature. But it's all about creating those skills and harnessing the sparkle that people have, which is a word we use a lot. So what people are really passionate about, what they love, and helping find a way to turn that into a meaningful career. So whether that's at the prospector or whether it's taking your skills and jumpstarting them and you know going off and 
uh, transitioning to another job, which we have a couple prospects. One now works at the Apple Store in Danbury. Oh, that's amazing. One works at Chase Bank in Stamford, uh, Newman Real Estate uh, in Ridgefield. I saw that. Yeah. Lauren, yeah. Yeah. So Lauren there's Bonestelli, who we also graduated with. We also went to high school with, yeah. yeah. So it's about harnessing what people are great at and, and showing them the ways that they can make themselves even better just by, you know, you love drawing, let's work with drawing. Let's make you a graphic designer. Let's get you those posters so that you have an artistic portfolio so that you can go out and do commission pieces and freelance work or get a job as a graphic designer. So it's harnessing that sparkle and, and really, uh, you know, Having talked with, with parents of some of the, the people who work there, it's, it's such a gratifying thing for them to see their, their children um, valued and, and given a, a, an opportunity to do something really meaningful to them and, and to the rest of the world. Yeah, and it's incredible the leaps and bounds that, um, that the disability community at large has made within the last 30 to 40 years. Yeah. Um, so when you think about like institutionalization and, and state hospitals and um, quote unquote asylums, those things were only around in the 70s. You know, Willowbrook, um, terrible institution that was out on, uh, in 60s, New York City. Yeah. yeah, 60s and 70s. Yeah. And then you look at last year was 25 years since the passing of the ADA. So, and that was just for accessibility for transportation right. and for education. So when we look at, you know, the disability community and what's important and what's imper uh, pertinent to each and every one of the people that we employ is having a job, being yeah. able to provide for oneself, being able to have a community and a, and a sense of a pride, purpose, and belonging. And, you know, often at times for those of us who have been employed for a while, we take those things for granted, G getting a paycheck every every week, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting depositing it work, in your bank account. Yeah. There's so many things that, you know, we lose sight of those things in life. Um, and there's a population of adults who are incredibly talented, incredibly passionate, incredibly driven, motivated, and looking for that opportunity. And we're proud to create those opportunities, but we will need to create a whole lot more to tackle that. You, know, you have 105 in Richfield. Are you looking to expand it all and get more than just that number? Without a doubt, you know, when we talk about the prospector and the issue we're addressing, we can only do so much in Richfield. And we right. know that the future of employment for adults with disabilities in America, it, it's gotta be you know, a uniting effort. We have to have everybody on, on the bus, you know, going along and, and, and reaching that goal. So to that end, yeah, we are thinking about expanding into other areas and maybe trying a movie theater elsewhere. And so there are some open there, theaters. We, there are definitely, you know, this is, a, this is a point when the movie theater industry as a whole is, is declining uh, when we look at the advent of technology, streaming services, yeah. sure. and people having movie theater-like experiences in their own house. We have to recreate ways, or reasons, excuse me, for people to go to the movies. We have to make it much more than seeing something. It has to be an experience. It has to have, you know, the sparkle and the pink glove service, and you have to be able to dress up like your favorite princess for right. the Cinderella premiere, or you have to be able to come dress as your Star Wars character and interact with other Star Wars characters before the screening of Star Wars. It has to be more than that. It has to create empathy. Um, we often lose that face-to-face -face interaction nowadays with everything going on on our phones, and. We want to take the technology that we have and help people bridge that to, you know, hey, me and you saw the same movie. Now we know what to talk about. We're talking about a, a shared experience. Um, and there are not a lot of movie theaters out there that are capitalizing on the real human aspect of going to the movies. Um, so at a time when the, the, the industry is on a decline, we're very proud to say that we are the number two best performing four screen movie theater in the country. Really? The only one that's beating us right now is on East 86th Street in Manhattan. Um, so you think, you know, they have 2,000 total seats. We have 364. They have a little bit more of a population. They have yeah. you know, a million people. Percentage-wise, you're have, doing better. <laughs> you know, 29,000 in Richfield. So um, we're showing the disability community, the employers of this country, the movie theater industry, the power of meaningful work and how that's not a thing we do to pat our obituaries or to feel better about our lives at the end of the day because this is a thing we need to do. It's good for business and it's good for everybody involved. Um, so we're it's good current. for the country. Yeah, it's good for everybody. Yeah. And you all have fun. I mean, it's it's just a great. <laughs> have you place. seen Mike's rap videos <laughs> yeah. of the video yeah. movies? Of yeah, course so he's that's that's fun. my sparkle. I love rap and I love hip hop, and I get to use that in meaningful ways. So I, you know, I work with uh, a couple other rappers there at the Prospector, and we make music videos about you know go to the concession stand or support our mission. It's all tied in. It's all dynamic and multi layered, and I get to have fun because I get to go to work and rap and make music videos for my raps and teach other people like how cool rap is and the history of rap 
and uh, you know I love it because one day I'm going in writing a grant, the next day I'm recording a rap, the next day I may be dressed as a hamburger for a promotional video, <laughs> I may be making popcorn. You're I, wearing you many know, different you never hats. Know. Exactly, yeah. and in the nonprofit world, you always wear many hats, but I think it's even more so when you have a costume department in the lower level of your building and so good. movie theater. Yeah. That always helps, yeah, right? It does. So the theater, you have four theaters. You're showing four different movies right now. Correct. And then you're going to be bringing in a whole slate of new movies this fall. I mean, you've got the Fantastic up. Beasts and Where to Find Them. That's mm -hmm. the new J.K. Rowling. Yep. You yeah. have Doctor Strange with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Which looks awesome. awesome. Every time they show a new preview, it, I think it's getting better and better. Yeah. And um, then there's a couple other ones that I are mean, coming I'm out. The Star Wars, obviously. I'm a Star obviously. Wars yeah. guy. So yeah. we've got we to talk about Rogue One and how the plans for the Death Star got into the hands of Princess Leia. Exactly. So that's the, the new Star Wars story. And, and so that's coming out in December. So you have a one a big one basically per month, would you say? And yeah, I mean, November's going to be crazy. Like you said, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And then you have the latest Disney animation, Moana, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, Disney always does great. They always offer great products, but you add Lin-Manuel Miranda into the, the mix. Yes, says, yeah. And so that's going to be very popular as well. And then moving right into the new year, I know everybody's got their eye on Founder um, mm -hmm. uh, with Michael Keaton as Ray Kroc. Yes, as that'll be great. Possible, um, you know, award material. But you also got to think about Sully, which we have for one more week. And Tom Hanks, he could win that uh, another I, Oscar. I really think, so you have to have a balance of movies that are Disney as well as, you know, kind of yeah, I mean, adult f fair. Ridgefield is a very family-oriented right. town all around. So, I mean, our best movies are animated movies and family movies, and they sell more concessions, generally speaking. So we love when Disney comes out with an animated movie. We love DreamWorks, Blue Sky, uh, you know, all those people putting out those great family-oriented movies. But we also have a big audience that likes the upscale um, you know, award season caliber type movies. The Sullys, the American Snipers, the Founders, the Girl on the Train. Girl on the Train. So um, we do have a big audience for right. that as well. But you got the accountant coming in in two weeks too. The accountant yeah. coming in two weeks, and we're trying to talk with uh, Jeffrey Tambor, who comes to the Prospector. I often. just had Prime Burger next to that guy like, last month, and he's yeah. in that movie. So we're going to see maybe if we can get him there and talk about it. But we got the accountant coming up. Uh, we got some uh, Bride of Frankenstein. Right, you have some Hollywood. Halloween movies yep. that we wanted Halloween to mention. Halloween programming, and then uh, right into busy November. And is there December. any costume party for the Halloween season? Yeah, yeah. costumes yeah. encouraged. We, so we're doing a screening of the Bride of Frankenstein right. and um, Sphere, another local nonprofit whom our founder Valerie, Valerie Jensen, Jensen right. worked with before. Um, they have their own Sphere version of Bride of Frankenstein, so we're doing a double we're feature. Screen that, yeah. Yeah, and then in November we have. Uh, have you ever seen Thanksgiving? No. Oh my gosh, it's one of the worst horror movies of all time. <laughs> oh boy. The Thanksgiving Turkey. Worse than Killer Tomatoes? Yeah, the Thanksgiving Turkey <laughs> comes to life and seeks his revenge. What is the uh, one? Right. Is it like The Room or? Oh, we do a room screening every yeah, April. That's which right. I we that. love The Room. Yeah. I love The Room. Yeah. Um, one of the absolute worst movies of all time, but next year it's going to be even talked about more because they've adapted. I thought you were going to say there was a sequel. No. So Greg Sestero, one of the actors in that movie, to go off on a tangent, he wrote a book called The Disaster Artist, which was about working with Tommy Wiseau, the man who made this incredibly awful yet absolutely genius movie called The Room. <laughs> um, and they're making a movie about the making of the movie, and Seth Rogen and James Franco got the, the Oh, that the sounds role. amazing. So uh, James Franco is going to be Tommy Wiseau. Oh, um, that's awesome. And, yeah, so that's going to come out, so everybody's going to be talking about The Room again, yeah. which I love because, like I said, it's one of my favorite it's so It's so good it's bad. Or it's so bad it's yeah, good. It's just And you've got The Wizard of Oz coming in November, Yes, too, right? The Wizard of Oz, which is very important to our mission. We have a, a piece of Wizard of Oz-related artwork in our Prospector Lobby, and just, you know, the whole story of The Wizard of Oz, and... Um, that was one of the first ever Technicolor movies, and people being mm -hmm. able to see a movie in color, in color was such an incredibly eye-opening and amazing experience. And we like to imagine that you know people fast forward, you know, eight or so something years into the future, and you walk through the door of the Prospector, and you see people with disabilities in a whole new light, and you know, shatter your expectations of that as well. Um, also in Wizard of Oz, everybody's looking for something the entire time, and then they get to Oz to realize that they have it. They, they had, had it, it all along, yeah. and we find that to be true with you know prospective prospects that we're interviewing and saying, you know, gosh, like, look at your resume, look at your experiences, look at your talents, like, how, how do you not have a job right now? You have everything you need. You just, you know, it's, it's not until you come to a place like the prospect that you realize. They need more places like the prospect. Yeah, exactly. People, it, this is, it, it's on the private sector to really tackle this issue and for businesses of, you know, large and small sizes to come together and say, we need to have a hand in this um, because we can only do 
you know, so much, and, and it's going to take a team effort. Have you seen an interest from other towns other than Richfield at all in, in the mission? Or Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of different towns in the area, um, Fairfield County and Westchester County, who have reached out and said, you know, we think what you're doing is really special, and we, you know, would love our town to be a part of that. And right now we're really assessing the options and what's ahead of us and what's realistic for what we do. And, you know, we're a young organization. We're yeah, two be years. Scaling, scaling two years. up is Yeah, is we're going to be challenge. celebrating two years this yeah. November. So, um, you know, the, the goal was always going into it thinking of we need to have a bigger impact than just in Ridgefield. Um, so this day and this, this point in time had always been, you know, known that it was going to come. We talk about maybe expanding. So now it's very exciting to be doing that, you know. Doing that work in addition to planning the whole holiday slate. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. there's always a lot to be done, but we love work because yeah. work creates more jobs and more jobs exactly. and more hours. And, and there's a documentary about. coming out about Yes, the there is. Yes. I mean, you've been on TV a few times. Yes, we've been on TV a couple times. We do have a... Uh, a group of documentarians reached out to us. They found us and love what we were doing, and they wanted to make a, you know, a documentary about us. They're fun, self-funding it themselves, so they're coming and, um, you know, being a part of everything. They just, I think, filmed their last bit this past uh, summer, so they're looking at a 2017 maybe trying to make some festival runs with it and stuff. Yeah, so. they came right. and visited us at the office, actually. Yes, yes. We hadn't seen so them since they were on our show. Definitely check it out. on the radio. 25 Prospects Street, yeah. so that'll be coming out next year. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to hold you on the couch, and we're going to talk about The Girl on the Train, which comes out on Thursday, as we previewed. We're going to talk about some, some thrillers that involve femme fatales, because Emily Blunt is definitely that in yep. this movie. Oh, yes. Oh, and we'll yes. be back after this commercial break to talk about uh, that movie that's coming out next weekend. I'm a filthy rich executive. I hear the markets down a million points. I freak out. I spill my large espresso. The searing pain makes me slam on the brakes. Uh-oh, your fault. And your cut rate insurance may not cover my $90,000 car, so I sue you, because that's what I do. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem like me. Visit your local Allstate agent, Nick Montanero, at 6528 Main Street in Trumbull for a personalized quote. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. At Mexon Main, Trumbull's very own Mexican Grill, we're all about fresh, fast, and friendly service. Our Main Street restaurant offers the best in traditional and non-traditional Mexican dishes, with only the best ingredients, never frozen. From authentic burritos, fajitas, quesadillas, and salads, we have something on the menu for everyone in the family. And enjoy our open salsa bar, giving you more ways to customize your meal. Stop in for lunch or dinner at 6528 Main Street Trumbull, or find out more at mexonmain.com. At Greenwood Physical Therapy of Bethel, individualized care, knowledgeable staff, and state-of-the-art equipment provide the best of orthopedic and sports medicine services. Our experienced therapists at Greenwood provide the highest level of knowledge and care. Greenwood accepts most kinds of insurance, and staff are there to answer your questions. Open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., the clinic serves the greater Danbury area and is a convenient drive from Reading. Appointments are available within 24 hours. Just call 203-917-4792 or visit Greenwood Physical Therapy.com for more information. At the Ridgefield Suzuki School, we believe that every child can. Using the internationally recognized Suzuki method, children learn to play their instrument in an environment of encouragement, parental support, and community. The Suzuki approach seeks to develop the whole child to help unfold his or her natural potential to learn. Private lessons and group classes are offered on violin, viola, cello, and piano for children ages four and up, and young children can enroll in the school's early childhood classes before beginning an instrument. The Ridgefield Suzuki School, nurturing a love of music in all children. Call us at 203 203- 403-2667 or visit RidgefieldSuzukiSchool.com. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached 1.7 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. 
Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. We're still here on the couch with Mike Santini, the Prospector Theater. Girl on the Train starts Thursday at the theater in Richfield for yep. those who want to go see it. Very exciting movie. It was a first a book, and I think they made it into a movie before the book even hit stands, if that that's correct. To that, I don't know, but I know the book's been very, <laughs> The book very, was, yeah. very, very, was very British, popular. so it wasn't right. published in the Which States. I didn't realize first. until recently yeah. that, it, that it's based in England, yeah. and it's actually funny now that the, the film adaptation is actually based in Ardsley, New York, in yeah. Westchester County, yeah, there so you go. right down the road, really. There's something very American about uh, a thriller involving a missing girl or a and murder a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And it's interesting, because I think Emily Blunt and John Krasinski live in Westchester, and of course she's British, mm -hmm. so right. mm -hmm. there's all these little mm -hmm. cross-currents. And it's got a great cast. In addition to Emily Blunt, you have Allison Janney from TV, you have Justin Thoreau from The Leftovers oh, yeah. on HBO, you've yeah. got a ton of different people. Haley Bennett, who was in The Magnificent Seven that I just saw, she's the girl who goes missing. There's yeah. some, there's She's some the girl that's murmurings not on the of train. early, you know, Academy Award nods maybe and yeah. things that go on. So we'll see. It's slated to have a big opening this weekend. Sure. Um, Gone Girl made a ton of money, and that's probably yeah. the most recent comparison. They uh, to somebody this movie. has quoted it as kind of like the, right. the second coming of Gone Girl. Gone Girl, um, right? I've heard it's actually from some people versus the books. I've heard that the people prefer the girl. I loved the book of really Gone true. Girl, so yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that the, the this movie is better. I haven't read the book, but I hope that this movie is a little bit better than the film Gone Girl. Mm -hmm. What are some of your guys' favorites of this genre of, of girls gone missing, femme fatale type murder oh, mysteries? Femme fatale. The Maltese fan Falcon, Falcon is, a great is one. just, you know, Mary Astor in that is just... I haven't seen that one. Oh. oh, Humphrey Bogart. Well, Humphrey, you guys gotta, oh, you gotta Humphrey have Bogart. it at the theater. Yeah, yeah. You gotta bring that one in. She, she comes, yeah, you should get that one. That, that would be really good. She's, she comes into uh, Sam Spade's office. That's Humphrey Bogart. And it's all about a Maltese fac falcon that's um, lost, found, trying to right. find. Um, she gets his partner killed. He's investigating. Sydney Greenstreet is involved. It's a who Peter done it. Laurie is okay. involved. Yeah. But but she's she's seducing Humphrey right. while trying to get him to do what she wants him to do, which is probably not what he really wants to do. And in the end, that's the essence of the genre. <laughs> yeah. And and in the end, there's this great scene between the two of them where where you know tears are rolling down her cheeks, and she's saying, "You're not going to turn me in. You know, you can't do this. You, you're not really going to turn me in." And he goes, "Yeah, sweetheart." You're yeah, you're going to jail. And they show her going down in the elevator, you know, the little the little brass. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, it's great. It's great, yeah. And then there's Fatal Attraction, right? Fatal Attraction. Oh, yeah. That's that's one we have, yeah. Michael Douglas and uh, Glenn Close. Yeah. Yeah, that's about at the far end of, of crazed... Uh, yeah, that's about... It's some about of the elements that I'd put together was <laughs> it, you have to have a divorced couple or a really fractured relationship. So in this movie that's coming out, Emily Blunt is playing a divorcee. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you see in Gone Girl, they're in a very rocky relationship. Yeah. And some of these other ones where you have uh, Body Heat, William Hurt is basically cheating on um, yeah. I'm a, Kathleen Turner. Mm -hmm. And so it, probably one of the essences of this genre is rocky relationships or relationships think, uh, that are broken. I yeah. think probably one of the ones that had like the biggest impact on me growing up was a Swim Fan. Do you swim remember Swim Fan? Yeah. Fan? And just like the aspect of like online messaging and how like creepy that made the whole like hey like I'm here like I'm that was like fatal attraction like, in yeah. the digital age yeah, yeah the yeah. whole stalking it had element definitely, right it, yeah. the, the online element into it um, plus like you know those eerie scenes by the pool and all their like light and that was I liked it. yeah really fan. well sexuality plays a huge role in these things there's no doubt about it um, you see it in the trailer for Girl on the Train it's like Haley Bennett's characters running around in a towel, she's yep. naked in some of yep. the scenes. So there's definitely a sultry sexiness element to it. One of the ones that I had came up with on this list was Mulholland Drive for two reasons, because <laughs> you have this scene with Naomi Watts, uh, which obviously is one of the more famous kind of sexy nude scenes of all time. And then it's also Unreliable Narrator, which in this upcoming movie, Girl on the Train, she doesn't seem like she knows exactly who she is. Yep. Very much like Mulholland Drive, which yep. is a David Lynch film. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Uh, David yeah. Lynch scares me. Oh, it's it's <laughs> it creeps unbelievable me out. how disjointed and like convoluted. And you can't understand it, it, but it's so good at the I same time. I tried to watch Eraserhead once, and I was yeah. just like, yes, that's another good one. Chinatown. Chinatown is Chinatown. very much in the yeah. same vein as Maltese yep. Falcon. Yep. Yeah. Kind of a whodunit, but a lot of yes, ins and major outs. twists in right. that one. Yes. Forget about it, Jake. T Chinatown. Um, Vertigo is another one that I had on our list. Oh, yeah. I, you guys have, you, have you heard Vertigo with the Prospector? Or no, no, never uh, had it. Yeah. I've you actually should, never you seen it myself. You should have a Hitchcock night. Uh, yeah. 
We, when, there's a lot of different nights that we. There's so <laughs> Lex, many like, don't tell movies. me, I know. I, there's so many good movies that we have to like. We have to figure it out. We did the summer of Spielberg this past summer. We yes. brought back E.T., right. Jaws, Goonies, you know, and there's so many different movies, and we're talking about maybe even a Scorsese. That would be awesome. Next yes, year. He's coming yeah. up with the one yeah. with uh, Liam Neeson. Uh, silence. Um, yeah. So, you is know, that going to be in time for the Oscars or no? Nah, they, they claim, but I don't know. It took them. How, how long to actually get the movie off the ground and running? It's yeah. been like in the making for 15 years or something. Right. Like that. It's incredible. <laughs> Liam Neeson, I yeah. think uh, Garfield's in it, right? Andrew Garfield? Yep, Andrew Garfield. And I'm trying yep. to think who else is in that, but that's a good one. Um, Girl um, with the Dragon Tattoo is another recent kind of femme fatale thriller. And that was thriller. another big book. Another book, yeah. 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 Another yeah. You've got to see that as a repeat theme in this genre is books to movies with Gone Girl. Yep. And it's Girl interesting, too, because you have, you, have the, you have the two versions too, the right. European version and, and the American version and Rooney Mara was just amazing in that. I liked Rooney a lot. I actually kinda like the Swedish version of the film Did you? better. And I don't I don't know why, but I've just said that I don't like the two David Fincher movies and I love David Fincher, but yeah. those are two of not his best. The game is another one, not a femme fatale but a thriller from David Fincher. What's, what's that? Michael that? Douglas and Sean Penn. Oh, well, it's, it's so it's good, yeah. Intense. It's, it's yes. hard to explain, but basically, uh, Douglas is playing this, uh, I don't know how to put it bluntly, but he's not a very nice guy. <laughs> and then, uh, the new age version of those movies may be uh, Ex Machina. Did you get yes, the to we were just that? talking about that. And yeah. Yeah. Like, does that fall into that, that category sure. as well? Because she definitely, you know... Uh, and manipulates. That, and she manipulates, manipulates the entire degree. situation, yeah, right? Yeah, and I was like, my mind was blown at the end. Oh yeah, when, yeah, she yeah. walks into yeah. real life. Yeah, uh -huh. we won't blow it that much no, for people I haven't seen, but that is a good one. You had you had um, detour down. Detour is a good one from yeah. 1940. And I, I was looking up in Savage. Who that's another one where it's like multiple perspectives, and yeah. you don't really know what the heck is the truth in these. She movies. has such a, she has such the look though of, right. of, the, of the femme fatale, you know, with the kind of. Long hair and the mm -hmm. and the pout and the story she needs did, to have a certain. She did 20, right. 20 movies between nineteen forty three and nineteen forty six. Oh my God! What? She's like Kristen movies. Stewart she, of movies, the forties. You know? But she was she was uh, everywhere apparently. Yeah. But that was her big one. Right, and that one's a, again a good one, a good example of not being able to trust the narrator or the story. Yeah. It's yep. like you see it in with Gone Girl too. Most recently, it's like what she's telling you is not necessarily the truth and. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of that this weekend with Girl on the Train, which is leading you one way, but I'm sure there's a lot more that's happening under the surface. That's It definitely is. Yeah. I wonder if it's better to go in having not read the book. Well, that's what I was thinking, too. My girlfriend's reading the book right now is because she, she wants to in, see it. In she preparation. Wants to right. to see it. Um, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm planning on going to see it this weekend. I haven't read it, so um, I don't know. I, You'll I, have to compare it. Yeah, we'll have to compare it because I'm generally one of the people that I like the book generally more than the movie. There are certain instances where maybe not. Uh -huh. um, I think Count of Monte Cristo, I equally like the, the movie as much as the book. I'm actually reading that oh, book right now. So good. Yeah. Uh, Never read it in high school. But like Harry Potter, when right. you think of those books, yeah. and like, you know, how you know, that's a lot to fit into a movie. Yeah. What about so, The Hobbit, which was made into three movies? I could never, <laughs> I could never get into those, uh, unfortunately. I yeah, tried. I didn't, I didn't really but like... There was so much family lineage, it was right. hard to get to the actual, it was like Boromir, yeah. Fondasar, and the Elder. I yeah. thought the movies were actually better. better. Chart them all yeah, out, exactly. yeah. And oddly enough, Luke Evans, who's playing kind of the person that's dating Haley, or I think it's the husband of, of Bennett's character, is, is in this movie. He was also in The Hobbit. Mm -hmm. So the, the cast is really deep. It's yeah, got a couple of like TV people. Laura Prepon is in it from that oh. 70s show. Oh, and Orange yeah. is the New Black. And Orange is the New Black, yeah. right. Allison Janney, Lisa Kudrow is in it from Friends. Oh, really? really? Yeah. <laughs> and so you have all these like different TV actors, and then you obviously have Emily Blunt as the lead. So I think it's going to be a really good movie. It'll do. It's got a good cast. It's got a good following right now with the book. We found that you know those book movies come out. Even um, Fifty Shades, when we had that at The Prospector, although... No, it wasn't the most coveted movie uh, by the, <laughs> the critics' reviews of it. People came out because it made it's one like of those 150 you, million at the yeah, box office. You need office to see, hey, how does the book stack up against you know the movie? Right. What's yeah. it like? And then if you look towards next year, there's a lot of other ones. You got The Shack, a uh, national yes. bestseller that's uh -huh. coming out yep. in the movie. And you got Dark Tower in February, which I'm a huge Stephen King yep. fan. You got a retelling of it later on in the year too. So people like to come out, and you know, especially with books, you have such like vivid imagery when you yeah. read something yeah. and you have an idea of what the character looks like and how it feels and what the, you know, it sounds like and it's interesting often to compare it where it's just like well is this kind of how I saw it in my head and now it's this and then uh, well, people will get that ability this weekend yeah. Prospector Theater will be playing the girl on the train Mike thank you so much for stopping by the couch 
Love talking movies here. with us, talking the mission. Yeah. We'll yeah. have you back on soon, I'm sure. Hope so. All right, have a good one. We'll head Thank off you. to do our Thank second you. commercial Thanks, break. We'll talk about HBO's Westworld, which premiered uh, last night when we come back. Washington Pride, now open on Main Street in Georgetown. Come enjoy our relaxed setting, excellent service, award-winning nightly happy hours, and feast on our creative new American cuisine. Connecticut Magazine's winner for best steak, Washington Prime of Georgetown. The leaves are changing, water temps dropping, and the sun is setting a little earlier each day. But there's still a lot of great boating, fishing, and coast time left before we see the first snow. And above all, remember, it's always summer at the Dock Shop. With loads of new fishing tackle and accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor, the Dock Shop is just what you need when you start to feel that New England autumn chill. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DockShop.com. At Elements Massage Ridgefield, we believe in quality services that are affordable and focused on therapy and healing. The licensed massage therapists are available seven days a week, offering deep tissue and Swedish massage, as well as prenatal and couples massage. Special introductory rates are available now, or try our Elements trademarked wellness program. For more information, contact Elements Massage Ridgefield at 203-403-3348 or visit elementsmassage.com backslash Ridgefield. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. My property taxes on my single family home were close to $20,000 a year. Now that I've downsized and I'm in a town home, and because of the condo tax laws, my fees have gone from $20,000 down to about $5,300 with the star exemption. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. Hi, this is Leo Carl from Carl Chevrolet in New Canaan. And you've heard me talk about the Chevy Volt for years. The new model gets 53 miles on EV charge daily, plus 420 mile full range. But don't take my word for it. You need to come in and test drive the Volt yourself. Visit us at 261 Elm Street in New Canaan or online at carldirect.com. I'm Frank Granito. And I'm Donald Ng for the HAN Network. Tune in to Nutmeg Sports Monday through Thursday, where we bring you all the top stories from Connecticut sports. From highlights to player interviews and expert analysis, no one gets you closer to Connecticut's games than Nutmeg Sports. Nutmeg Sports, now Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. on the HAN Network. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. We've got a couch first-timer, <laughs> Josh Fisher, back from his wedding and his honeymoon. Hey, Steve. Hey, Sally. Hey, How's hey. it going? Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, at, of course. Uh, a big TV guy. Of yeah, course. excited to talk some TV. Yeah, and yeah. HBO had a big premiere. It's $100 million kind of tent pole of a show. Mm -hmm. Westworld premiered last based night. Based on a movie. Based on a, based on a movie, kind of a Jurassic Park meets Groundhog's Day meets Lost meets Truman Show. Yeah. Meets all these different AI kind of... AI meets... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man versus Creator. A lot yeah. of different themes going on. What did you think of it, uh, first watch? I mean, I, I, I certainly enjoyed how different it is from you know other things on TV. You can I think you can certainly compare it to all sorts of different things, but it certainly is is its own thing too, which is neat. I had trouble though, Steve and Sally, of finding why I need to should care about these characters, which is often important for me when I'm watching a new show. Particularly, why should I care about robots who don't who maybe I guess they kind of possibly remember their history, which is part well, of the new Well, that's what they're AI, coming out to remember, but they really don't. Yeah. And um, so. I, that's what now Liz, my my wife and I, we watched it together last night, and she really enjoyed it, which surprised me that she enjoyed it so much. I was going to say, I would not think it's a show necessarily for women to enjoy, but my girlfriend Kelly also enjoyed it. I was yeah. pretty surprised that that so, she liked it. I thought she was going to run into the And why, why would you say women would not? Because it's very violent and it's very sexualized, and I think 
a lot of the TV critics were very much against this Ed so Harris character. So these are all women as objects. Exactly. They but were they're very, robots. They were very right. much against Ed yeah. Harris's mm -hmm. character in the first ten minutes of the show. Drags the Evan uh, Rachel Woods character, or Rachel Evan Woods character, into a shack and you know rapes her off screen. But like that was, I think, what, a huge point of contention with TV critics this morning. Yeah, and that was a big thing. A lot of the violence and the, the rape, so to speak, in there took place off screen. They, right. You know, they, they sh particularly... Um, well, I think that's HBO playing careful after the Game of Thrones. Yeah, I guess a lot of you'd, you'd kind of see backlash. the gun being, the, the trigger being pulled, but you wouldn't see always what the, the destruction reaction, yeah. that, yeah. that happened from it. Sometimes you would see the, the well, One of the rules too. of the park is that the humans or the guests can't die. Right. And so they can kill the host, which are the robots, and then the robots just reset at the end of the day. So it's very, the bullets don't necessarily matter, is I think what I was Yeah, and they, and they come back and they reset and they'll show them fixing up some of the, the Narratively, robots. I thought it was Repairing. great. How it, yes. Yeah. It That's opens with a dialogue with her character and the uh, Jeffrey Wright's character that you think is the start of the show, but mm -hmm. really the dialogue that they're having at the beginning of the show isn't actually taking place until about 40 minutes into the pilot. Right. And so Jeffrey Wright's amazing. Jeffrey Wright's character was He's dynamic. He's always amazing. Yeah, that's true. He was true. fantastic. The scene where he, uh, I forget the doctor, or the other person that he works with name, and she does like some look where she's angry, and he's like, well, give me that look again. Like, yeah, I want to put that into the robots. That, yeah. <laughs> I found that so profound that because people are so upset with Ed Harris' character and how he's scalping people and raping mm -hmm. people, but Jeffrey Wright is just as bad. He doesn't even care about the person that is actually human in front of him. He just wants to Get take their face and put it on a robot's face. That's all he cares yeah, about. The dehumanization of life is, is, I think, a huge theme of the, the show. It'll be interesting to see what his character's like right. going forward. And it's great to see Anthony Hopkins back on the screen. Of course. You know? yeah. How many times has he retired and come back? <laughs> <laughs> How old is he 18, now? 18, I think. Yeah. Do you, do I think he's in his 80s. He's in his yeah. 80s, yeah. yeah. And he was great last night. He, he looks great. Him and Jeffrey Wright, I think, had some of the best scenes in the, in the show. Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting to see where they, they go with, with this, this right. show. Um, you can add new characters right. and take them off the board. How very, many how many episodes are there in this series? This in this season. So they're, I think they're really trying mm -hmm. to make this the fall version of Game right. of Thrones. So they have and they could very add loyal in, following in, in the, the movie. There were other areas. It wasn't just uh, right. Westworld. There was a Roman. Well, they hinted uh, at that. Yeah, is, is that so. they're the oh. corporation or the entity that's the 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 man upstairs oversees not just Westworld, this theme park, but there are several other theme parks right. that this entity controls. So it's, so it's when do you yeah. get to the other storylines. It's, it's a neat concept, yeah. but it is, I guess it just what, what bothered me about it is, is is we're made to try and care about robots. Right. And why should we care about robots? And the, many of the humans who at least, or the guests that go there are jerks. And they yeah, go there to be jerks. Yeah, I was gonna say, they sound pretty despicable. Mm -hmm. Now not all of them are, but, but certainly the-, the They're trying to get ones. a thrill. So yes. the one guy who's the guest in the first episode shoots the bank robber or the mm. saloon robber, and so that's like you know he's, he's like take my to be photo I just guy. yeah I took I'm the good guy I just I just killed the mm -hmm. bandit, and so like it's playing off of that element. But what I was taken aback by is it's, the show itself is so aware that it's a show because you have the guy who's writing it and he's just like wait until you hear this speech, and so the bank robber's about to make the speech. But then he gets his head blown off yeah. instead, and so they're like, "Haha, you didn't get to read your dialogue." This is back in the right. mission control area. It's very much like Truman Show with uh, it is. with so Ed Harris. So you're actually, always seeing the people controlling the action, right? Yes. So yeah. it, it starts yeah. off with her character; she's a robot, so. and then it flips back to the Jeffrey Wright, Anthony Hopkins, who are the creators. And they don't control it, but they have writers who kind of write out different possible yes. outcomes for it. So it depends on who. You know, if one of the characters runs into somebody right away in five the minutes, day, right. that will then alter there. It's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure. Yeah, it's ah, like a video book. game. Yeah, and I thought it was very critical of the kind of escapism that you get playing a Grand mm -hmm. Theft Auto or something like that. Or, it sounds you know. like it, yeah. Right, and Josh is right. That was the interesting part. It's like if someone chooses something, it affects the whole day. Yeah. Which is neat, that little butterfly effect of right. uh, time travel or Groundhog Day. and. That stuff is deep. And I wonder though, but is it just a 24 hour period they all get? Is it, does it just reset every single day? I think so, because that's what they keep showing right. you her waking up. So you just up get one day? That seems so, like, well, it's like going to Disney World. You go I guess, for yeah. the day. And what I like you get the weekend pass, I guess. and then you can, uh, you can afford it. What I like most about it, actually, before we end the segment, is the ending of the show it wasn't Game of Thrones, you know, a child getting thrown from a tower. It was her character standing on the porch and mm -hmm. killing the fly. Right. And the fly which, is very symbolic of. 
she's becoming aware of who she is. That's a good point, because they show a lot of the robots early on with flies on them, right. walking on their eyes, and the robots don't care at all. And then she says, and then she, oh, then she and says then, out loud in the show, I will not kill a living thing. Right, and then she And then does she kills that, a living yeah. thing. And the living uh, thing is just a little fly. It's not hint, a child. Hint, yeah. hint, yeah. Exactly. So. Great show, Westworld, HBO, 9 of p.m. every Sunday this fall. Josh, we'll have you back on and we'll talk some more TV. Yes. It's great that we have the Monday time slot. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk to you. Oh, and the pressure yeah. online. I'm just thinking about it all morning. Thank you so much for watching the uh, Arts and Leisure program. Today we'll be back next Monday, or two Mondays from now, actually. We're off next Monday. And we'll talk to you on Arts and Leisure, and we'll see you then.